There you go. Here we are. Spiritual Perspectives with Wendy and Angelo. I always put the woman first. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. And if you're uh, watching us on the replay, give us a hashtag replay in the comments, please. And we have a special guest whose name is Ryan Hurd. And I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to give you his... Um, he's getting ready to... to um, teach or share uh, what we call an online community exploration this Saturday online and I'm going to put the uh, registration link up in the chat and just a reminder for everybody watching our online right um, our online uh, community exploration Community Explorations happen every third Saturday of the month and is sponsored by the Sacred Inclusion Network. And we bring in experts from literally all over the world to talk about topics uh, uh, in spirituality and inclusion and the connection um, uh, between those two topics. And this Saturday, we will have another expert on lucid dreaming, Mr. Ryan Hurd. And I'm going to tell you about Ryan. He was busy uh, te doing technological things to hopefully share with his massive network. Um, and I could, a lot I could say about Ryan, but I have a very short um, bio here. Uh, Ryan is a dream researcher. He's an educator and author. He's the author of several books on dreams and nightmares and the editor of dreamstudies.org. And he's got the greatest job title in the world. His day job, he's a, currently serving as a director of spiritual development at the Unitarian Society of Germantown in Philadelphia, PA. And he's an adjunct lecturer at John F. Kennedy University. Ryan, we're delighted to have you with us. Welcome. Yeah, how's thank your, you. How's your technology thing going on? Would you, would you be able to share us? I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. So it was <laughs> share. Um, it said I can start a watch party. Um, yeah, yeah, do that. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. But I think that's what the, that's the group. Let me see what happens. Yeah, and we'll, Wendy and I'll we'll chat for for a little bit. Uh, yeah. So uh, one thing I do want to say about the Saturday explorations again. This Saturday, all right, thanks, Ryan. Glad we got that put together. This Saturday will be Ryan, and the topic is on lucid dreaming, which is a fascinating topic. But during our Saturday explorations, we have an expert come on. They usually have an exercise that you can participate in, and then you can ask questions of our experts, and you can share your opinions. Oftentimes, we'll do a little bit of a round robin. So it's really participatory. And if you're curious about this topic, it's perfect time to show up, ask your questions, have an experience, and understand more about um, this uh, lucid dreaming. Yeah, and so another, another piece, just to go along with that, um, if you have specific things you'd like Ryan to cover, I'll just put it in the chat and I'll, I'll share it with him. Because Ryan knows a lot about this subject. He can go wherever, wherever he thinks um, you know, it's, people want to go, basically. All right. <laughs> So we're actually doing a, 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 a what's called a watch party, which I've never done. And um, Ryan is fiddling with the technology. And um, Ryan, you can give me a heads up when I can ask you a question. Otherwise, um, Wendy and I'll just keep chatting, which we, we can do uh, a lot because we, that's what we do. <clears throat> so Angelo, just real quick, uh, have you had the experience of lucid dreaming? Before? I have, I have. Just like Ryan, I had it when I was a child, and um, I have um, I've had I have I've had lots of ex I have different experiences with lucid. I'm I'm not I'm not in Ryan's league with this, uh, but Ryan, you know, I should really start with 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 the basics. I have a question I wanted to ask you in my script, um, but why don't you just tell us what lucid dreaming is and why anybody should care about it or why it might be useful? Yeah. So can you hear me? Yes, I can. Great, great. So we I had some feedback for a little second there when I did the watch party. Um, so, so lucid dreaming is awareness uh, that you're dreaming while you're in the dream. That's, that is the, you know, the short definition. Uh, it's, and it's really just like 
this, this knowing, which can be verbalized or can be a feeling, right? Hey, I'm dreaming right now. The, everything I'm experiencing is happening while I'm literally sleeping in bed. And everything that I'm feeling, everything I'm seeing is part of my dreaming imagination. And so it's, it's just a really phenomenal experience that happens spontaneously, as well as you can learn how to do it. There's tactics that people use to do it. And what's so interesting about lucid dreaming is that people are getting into it right now during the pandemic um, because of all these interesting, you know, it's an anxious time and our sleep is disturbed. We're also getting more sleep and all these factors are kind of coming together to create sort of that cauldron of, um, of activity for lucid dreams. Yeah, you know, and we, I, we put this pandemic related title on, on it, on it, Ryan, so I should at least ask you, uh, are, 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 are people dreaming different differently in the time in the time pandemic? I mean, is there any sort of initial research about that? Yeah, yeah. So what's there is initial research about this. Uh, and there's been several prominent dream researchers who have been collecting COVID nightmares, COVID dreams since early March. Um, one of them is Deidre Barrett, uh, who's at Harvard Medical School. And another one is Kelly Balkley, uh, who has a blog on psychology today. And he's been, both of them have been doing what I would call digital dreaming, dream research, where they're collecting dreams and then looking at dream themes and then pulling and pulling out. And there's this kind of collective resurgence of dreaming that's happening. Uh, and besides that, there is some, uh, some research by the Lion Neuroscience Research Center. They found that there's been a 35% increase in dream recall since really? the pandemic began. And so it's not just you. It's not just your neighbor. We all actually are remembering and having more dreams right now. Interesting. Now, I know, Ryan, from talking to you earlier, um, your own sort of excursion into the world of studying dreams began when you were a young person and you actually had nightmares or a recurring nightmare. Could you maybe share a little bit about that? Yeah. So, I mean, I've always, I think, been a vivid dreamer myself. I think my first recollected dream experience was when I was six years old. Uh, and then um, I had some nightmares after I watched a horror movie when I was probably too young. And this is the part where I always say, mom, it wasn't your fault. It was a bad babysitter. Uh, so my folks are off of the hook for that one. Um, but, um, and then after that, just, you know, the, um, the horrors of adolescence um, created, created a very rich environment for me. And I grew up in a home where we talked about dreams. Uh, and so it was part of our everyday life, you know, so, so there was a community aspect to it that encouraged me to pay attention to my dreams. Um, but yet yeah, the nightmares were certainly a big piece of it because the nightmares were unsettling. Uh, they, were, they would rock me you know, existentially to my core uh, and, and sort of you know, forcing me to ask bigger questions about you know, what is reality? What is safety? Um, what is faith? Um, were all these questions that, that just really kind of came from the ferment of, of having, having vivid dreams. What is your sense, Ryan? I know broad question here, but um, you know, how, how do people use this sort of like the, the, the process of studying their dreams for their spiritual unfoldment, I'll call it? So dreaming is amazing because I see dreaming as, as the creative mind at work. And we dream about what is most important to us. We dream about the things, the people, the ideas, the concepts, our paradigm of reality, um, our, you know, our big dreams for the future. We dream about future, past, and present possibilities. And so that's just the, the baseline for what dreaming is from a, say, a cognitive psychology perspective. Uh, and so dreaming really is this vast, just, riches for self-exploration, no matter what your path is. Um, humanist, atheists, um, you know, believer, um, spiritualist, uh, because the way that we see reality is reflected in our dreams, and our dreams are continuously reprocessing recent experiences and putting them up against kind of the, the archetypal old maybe ways that the world used to work. We're always trying to figure things out um, make plans, survive, you know, there's an evolutionary piece to it. 
but it's uh, you know for for spiritual focus it's it's really i think one of the most i would say the quickest paths to understanding oneself particularly because dreams you know are messy and dreams are can be very dark and dreams get to that emotional underbelly that sometimes we don't want to accept about ourselves or about others or that we project onto others and those kind of screens just everything kind of is more visible as that rational filter is dampened during the dreaming imagination. I'm about to do a, uh, when you can come in any time, but let me just ask this one question. I'm about to do a, a podcast with John Perkins tomorrow. I'm very um, kind of nervous a little about it because uh, he's a big fish. But in any event, he has a lot of connections to the in indigenous folks. And I'm just curious as to, and this is, I know this is a, a very general question, but what's your sense as to how indigenous people use dreams versus um, you know, how we, we are? in our explorations of dream science? That's a big question. Yeah, so, I mean, so contemporary indigenous cultures and, and peoples um, have a, a plethora of dream practices that, that we often don't hear about um, in the Western world that, uh, but in general, um, given that there's a great diversity, um, what some of the commonalities that we see has to do with reflections of animism you know, this basic idea that the world is alive and we're part of a world that is alive. And, and so there's a respect for nature. And at the same time, there's a respect for dreaming and other altered states of consciousness as having information for us rather than in the West, which is a very, um, there's only one perspective that's really basically appreciated and that's this sort of rational waking demeanor. Uh, and so, so the West tends to you know, depress intuition. The West tends to depress emotional um, ways of knowing. Uh, and you don't see this so much in indigenous dream sharing uh, because of practices and because of the way that dreams are shared in the home, um, but also in, in medicine circles and in, for special sacred times. And, and some of this is quite unknown to Westerners and is kept secret on purpose. Uh, because it's it it really is it has as its own power to it, but yeah, indigenous dreaming is is um, is uh, alive and well. And in fact, um, I sometimes consult with the Worldwide Indigenous Science Network, uh, working with indigenous people, um, and they are developing their own dreamwork method. And what's interesting about the the dreamwork method that that Wizen uses has to do with looking at dream images and looking at collective dreaming. So everybody dreams together, draws their dreams onto a big piece of paper. And so it's sort of bypassing the linguistic aspects of dreaming, uh, blowing up the narrative effect of you know, stories uh, and creating new stories. Uh, and so there's, uh, there's, that's just one example of many of, of, of ways that there's different ways to go about dream sharing. Uh, so there's really a lot of ways that one can do it. Wendy, I know you got something to ask. So come on in. I have so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> so many questions. But I'm just going to um, piggyback on Angela's last question about indigenous practices, practices around dreaming with indigenous cultures. One of the more commonly or familiar uh, things that indigenous cultures do with dreaming is communicate over distance with each other. Um, and I've had that experience myself unconsciously with another person, I think, who did it consciously, who communicated to me directly in a dream. And then everything that we discussed played out in the following day after I woke up. So can you just say a little bit about dream communication between people? Yeah, so, so the indigenous perspectives on, on dream communication, but maybe a useful frame would be, would be shamanism or you know, shamanistic techniques. You know, I don't consider myself, I don't call myself a shaman, um, but dreaming and lucid dreaming I, is sometimes I think in the I'd say the shallow end of a very deep pool of shamanistic techniques that are employed all the, all the world over. Um, and you know, definitely cultures and people and individuals would use dreams to um, 
to do the, those basic things that shamanism does, which is gain information, um, heal for an individual as well as a client, um, and and also seek power, seek you know seek energy in, in self. And so those are basically the basic goals of shamanism. And so you see that played out in indigenous societies. In the West, it's called mutual dreaming. And there has been, you know, some, um, some research into it. Uh, the best research really comes out of the, out of the 1960s and 70s um, with Robert Van de Castle's work with Montague Ullman. They, they had a dream lab set up. Uh, in the basement of the Miatomi's um, hospital. And so they, they for, for, I believe, 13 years, because their studies comprised 13 years, they did research of where basically what we would call dream telepathy, in which people were trying to incept an idea or an image into someone else's dream. And they, you know, what's interesting about this research is that they did find a statistical correlation. It was very, very slight, but it was statistically significant. Um, but they did have also methodology issues that have been challenged by the latest generation of researchers. Um, but still, there's, there's some, you know, there is a lab effect that has been noted that I think, you know, is enough, I think, for, for people who are interested in, say, scientific methods, but don't take necessarily the scientism of you know flatland material nothing else you know things don't exist such as that information can travel um that there's enough to go on there and and of course if you listen to the voices of of indigenous cultures and and, and hear these stories and, and you listen to the to the reports uh you know what these experiences do is they change people's lives they change people's worldviews um they do heal um, and so, you know, so the outcomes, the actual somatic, psychological, sociological outcomes are quite positive uh, for engaging in this kind of thing. Uh, you know, it's funny that you, you mentioned uh, not enough research. I remember consuming a great deal of Dr. Larry Dossey books on the power of prayer and the scientific backing behind the concept that the mind is non-local. You know, the mind is not restricted to the physical brain. It is uh, uh, nearly omnipresent and information can be transferred, you know, instantaneously across the globe in a measurable scientific way. Um, and this has to be related as well. It's a, a matter of consciousness to consciousness or mind to mind communication. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, Larry Dossie's work on, on spontaneous healing is, is really fascinating. Uh, clearly, there's, there's a lot going on. And um, one, of the, one of the frames that I use is, is, is reframing, you know, and Larry Dossie did this, reframing the placebo effect as the endogenous healing response. And so, and we can get into those spaces through lucid dreaming. There are psychological healing that can be possible um, by engaging in these modalities. Uh, and even if you, you know, don't believe that it's true and you still engage in the ritual and the dream, there still can be positive effects. And so it shows sort of the strength of ritual, I would say, of, of ancient, maybe even ancestral components to, to doing dream work that are, they're just older than that rational, decursive mind. And so even though we try to blow up, this can't be true, it still, it still brings, uh, you know, um, solutions. Um, but for, for me, you know, that's not my research. I, I don't do research into mutual dreaming. I think it's interesting. Um, I, for myself, I see myself more as looking into the, the emotional healing capabilities of dreams, um, the self-growth aspects, and in particular, being able to face nightmares and um, initiation style dreams, uh, scary dreams, because they have a lot to offer. And the lucid dream space offers us a choice to stick around when the going gets rough. And that's something that, that is powerful. So Ryan, um, there's, we, could, we, could, we could talk endlessly. Um, 
hopefully people will come Saturday to um, get some more of this. But I'm thinking that we're, we're probably going to have a wide audience. You know, you have people that are, they, they're just hearing about this for the first time. People like Wendy that are experienced and they've been to, you know, um, these, all these workshops and things like that. Um, what, what, are, what are some, um, what, what do you, what, where, where, where do you think you're going to start Saturday? What, what are some of the things you'd like to share that you think that are to be useful for people, to, for a general audience? Yeah, well, the, the main thing is, is, is that I would like to just, you know, initiate this conversation that dreaming right now is, is having a heyday. Uh, so many people are experiencing vivid dreams like they've never had before. Uh, and from what I I can tell this is probably the biggest time that dreaming as a topic has, has hit the national conversation in 25 years, maybe longer. And it has to do with this, just these special circumstances of the pandemic, the anxiety from it, the possibility of it, there's grief in it, um, but there's also these underworld feelings of, well, what's next? What's gonna come anew from this, right? And so there's some hope what's coming coming through the dreams and what's coming through our lives because the dreams are, are a reflection of our lives and the lives are reflections of our dreams. And so so what we'll do is we'll go into some ways that that people can take advantage of the fact that dreaming is easier right now. Uh, and we'll talk about tactics for remembering more dreams as well as how to work with them yourself. Um, and then if there's interest and there's time, we can go into some of these special topics such as lucid dreaming, and in doing, for instance, dream incubation, where one asks a question to the dream to look for specific kinds of reflection or guidance or however you want to say it um, from, from the dreaming creative mind. Uh, ask the question and, and see what the dreaming mind has to say about it. So I think we'll be in for a pretty rich afternoon. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, so anyway, I put the, uh, put the URL in the, in the, in the chat. Um, if you have anything that you really want Ryan to go over, please, please, please share that, whether you're seeing it now, when you see it uh, virtually, whenever you see it. And um, Ryan, this is just fantastic. I can't wait for Saturday. This is going to be exciting. It's juicy. Absolutely. <laughs> There's yeah, excellent. so much to explore. It's such a great topic. And I love that your focus, that your personal focus in your study and your work is, is really rooted in healing. I love that. That's a really powerful thing. I think um, teaching people how to use dreams in order to grow and heal themselves is, is just amazing. I can't wait to hear more. Yeah, it's, a, it's like a sacred calling. Uh, Indeed, anyway, thank you. Thank you. We're that. all being initiated right now. Yes, this we are. It, so. <laughs> the group initiation. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to end the recording. Um, we'll see you all on Saturday, hopefully. See some of you anyway. Thank you, Ryan. Looking forward to it.